Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we're going to be working on our campsite. I thought it'd be cool to build like kind of a makeshift watchtower. So if you haven't noticed, I did upgrade to Blender 2.8 and I will at some point go into a more detailed tutorial of just 2.8. But for now, we're just gonna continue like normal and I will do some minor explanations of some different features that we typically use. But other than that, we're just going to worry about today's model. So to get started, if you come over here to this scene tab, where it kind of looks like a cone with the two circles on it, you can set up what units you'll be working in. So you'll just go down here where it says units and it's already set to Imperial. All I changed was length was inches. So of course you guys can work in whatever you would prefer, but I will be working in inches. One other thing that we typically start off with is going to an empty layer. 2.8, I don't think has layers. They have something called scene collections. So basically we can actually just hide all of this and we can even minimize it in our outliner. Do you right click on new collection or scene collection and hit new collection. You'll notice it's already highlighted. Let's do shift A mesh and we're going to start with a cylinder. Now you'll notice that you can actually go down here and change the vertices. So yours will probably pop up with 32. I like to start off with 12 so that way we can just have a lot less to work with. We can always add a subdivision surface modifier later on if we need to smooth it out. Um, but I will be working with this with 12 vertices. Now I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this just so that way we can look at another feature. You can change the size here, but I want to show you another way of how to change the size just in case you miss out on this part. So you can still hit N and this will open up the transform menu still. And you can change the dimensions in here as well if you missed out on changing it here. So for our X, we're going to do 0.25 inches. The Y will also be 2.5 inches. And the Z we're going to start with at two inches. Now I'm just going to hit period to focus in on this. And this is basically just going to be our starting pole. So I'm going to hit seven to go into top view. I'm going to tab into edit mode. Now everything should automatically already be selected. So we're just going to hit G for grab and we're going to pull this out about six squares to see where that is located. And before we do anything else, I'm going to go here to this wrench. Uh, it's a still our modifier tab. I'm going to rename this to base. And we're going to add modifier and do mirror. So that will add one pole on the other side, but I also want it to be back here as well. So that way we have a large four inch base. Now to make sure it is a four inch base because I haven't quite figured out the grid square layout yet. We're just gonna use this to verify and it's at three and a half. So that's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this and move it out slightly. So it's a little bit closer. So we have some room to play with. So it's not quite four inches. Of course, you can make it exact if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to leave it about here. Works pretty good. All right. So I'm just going to tab back into edit mode and we can start actually fleshing out our base. So I'm just going to go into either front or side view. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit N to hide that menu because we don't need that right now. We'll just do a control R to add a loop and we're going to bring that up to about here. Looks pretty good. Ooh. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to switch to face select mode and do one, two, three, and four. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So we'll do E to extrude and you'll notice the arrows don't pop up anymore. What we'll do is just go over here to move and grab those arrows and pull that along. Now, I also want to make sure clipping is enabled in our modifier. So we'll just go ahead and do X and delete those faces because we don't want those in there, just like normal. I'm gonna switch back to vertex select mode. Alt right click our loop here, drag that to meet. All right, so we just wanna do that, basically the same thing on this side. So it's going to be a little bit thinner since we're missing here. You could do control R and pull this over 
to get that extra loop if you're interested, but I'm actually gonna leave it off so that way we have a little bit of variation, make it look a little less perfect, and just do E to extrude, pull that along the X axis, do X, delete faces, switch back to vertex select, alt right click, and drag that along the X. So that meets up and we basically have our frame for the bottom. Now, the main point of this is to be a stackable kind of watchtower. So you can have different levels if you want or just kind of different scaffolding pieces. So since this is our base piece, we're going to leave the actual bottom totally flat. So it will sit flat on the tabletop. But we want to make sure that there's peg holes in order for it to be stackable. So I'm going to alt right click these vertices here. So I get this full circle to E to extrude, size that in, maybe a quarter way in. We're going to do E to extrude again. Focus in on that. I'm going to hit Z and you'll notice it comes up with a menu now. So we're just going to go ahead and select wireframe. We're just going to pull this down and I'm going to go to about this grid line here. So that's about three down. And of course you could make it deeper if you want. Actually, you know what? I might go ahead and do another one. So we're going to go to about four down. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of personal preference there. Okay. So I'm going to get out of wireframe view. So I'm just going to hit Z and go back to solid. And that might be a little thick. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and size that in a little bit more so we get a little bit more thickness here. Okay. So that we're we'll go ahead and leave it labeled as base. I'm going to go ahead and do shift D and duplicate that. So we're going to pull that up for now and I'm going to rename this base. I'm going to do with peg. So that way it's a little bit more descriptive. I'm going to push this down, tab into edit mode, alt right click this bottom face here. And then you can either go into side view or front view, whichever you prefer, and just focus in on that again by hitting period. Do E to extrude, size that in. And actually, I'm going to hit control seven so I can go to the bottom view, Z, and then click wireframe view. And we're going to size that in so that way it fits nicely into our other circle. And you'll notice I'm leaving a good amount of gap here because that way once it 3D prints, it's gonna have plenty of wiggle room. We can put glue in there if we want. And just because sometimes with our 3D printing process it's not always perfect. So that way if you know there's just a little bit extra filament or whatever that spills over, we have plenty of extra room here to play with. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into side view. Hit E to extrude and just pull that down into our actual peg hole. Now, obviously, I'm not going to make it meet or anything like that. I'm just going to pull it about right there. If we want, we can actually pull this down to make it meet. And yeah, there should be plenty of wiggle room, so it's not going to be too tall or anything like that. That should actually be pretty good. So it is stackable and you don't have to glue it if you don't want to. Okay, so Z, go back to solid view. So that is our base with both peg holes. So I'm going to leave that piece as is. So I'm gonna shift D, select the base with peg, and I'm just gonna pull that over and hide that one. So that way we can always have that one to go back on if we wanna add more details and things like that. But for now, I wanna change this one so that way we can do luring with peg. All right, so this one, we'll go ahead, tab into edit mode. I'm gonna go into top view, do control R, and we're gonna go ahead and add 10 loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we're just scrolling up until we have 10 loops added in. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to face select view. One, two, three, four, five. Grab these five faces here. Do E to extrude. Pull those out. Do X. Actually, we should be able to just pull those in. I'm going to go into wireframe view. Do X and delete those faces. Perfect. 
go back to solid view. And now there's a larger gap in the center, so I'm gonna do Control R, add a loop there, switch to face select again, do E to extrude, pull that in, do X, and delete that face as well, so we have that slatted flooring. So I'm gonna tap out of edit mode, so we have our flooring piece created. Now I'm gonna unhide our base with the pegs, Shift D, that one, so we get another one. Just go ahead and fix that so it is lined up. And this one we're going to rename to be roof with peg. Okay, so I'm going to tab into edit mode. I want to go ahead and do a control R and I want to leave a little bit of spacing beneath the fencing that we're going to have around our um, watchtower. So just about there, nothing crazy precise. And then do a control R, put that about this second grid line here and go ahead and divide that in half. So size that down along the Z. So we have a nice gap in between our fence posts. Switch to face select, grab these four faces, do E to extrude, pull that with along the Y axis, do X and delete those faces. Pull that along the Y axis to make it meet, do X and delete those faces. And we'll just go ahead and do the same thing on this side. A to extrude, pull that out, X and delete faces. So we have our fencing. So one last thing I wanna do is add a roof. So on the top, first thing I need to do is just fix one of these edges. So what I'm gonna do, grab these guys here, do S, Y, zero, move them in. Let's do that again, S, Y, zero, to fix that there. And we don't really need this peg hole anymore, so I'm just gonna do it X and delete all of these vertices and face that off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, grab this face as well as these top ones here, and do E to extrude. I'm going into front view, we're gonna pull that up and push that right over to make it meet in the center. Maybe pull it up a little bit more. Go into wireframe view, get our face selected and delete that extra face. So now we have our roof piece. Now, of course, you can go back in, add more scaffolding pieces or add in more details, anything like that. But before you print, don't forget to go ahead and apply your modifiers. You can always double check with these sizes by hitting N, make sure it's not too crazy, make sure it'll actually fit inside your printer, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and unhide our first collection so we can see the comparison in sizes. So right now it fits perfectly over <laughs> our military tent. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these guys, pull them over and maybe pull them to the back a little bit. This looks like our carriage is kind of parked in front and it actually looks like it is suited pretty well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It hasn't taken me too long to get kind of used to Blender 2.8. Like I said, I want to go ahead and get an actual 2.8 tutorial out in the near future. But other than that, let me know what you guys thought. If you have any suggestions or quick tips or recommendations and just um, requests, just go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I do have the link to my Discord as well. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week.